Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, in this Tactical Thursday episode, we're going to be talking all about Power BI and how mastering this specific tool can help grow your analytics career. We're going to break down the five major functions of Power BI, and then I'm gonna kick things off to Daniel here to talk about the pros and the cons of the interface. So the five major functions really break down into two sections. So you have things that you can do with the data and then ways that you can share the data. So the first four are preparing, modeling, analyzing, and visualizing data. The fifth is Power BI service. So think about you can do all these things. You can connect to multiple data sources. You can transform the data. You can pull it into a dashboard and you can throw some advanced analytics on that dashboard then Power BI service is how you can share it with other people within your organization. So kind of the, the key takeaway that I wanna pitch for you guys is that Power BI is a great way to democratize data. So you can build a dashboard for non-technical users. So if someone can click a mouse and just select a bar and then filter a, another chart, then they are tech savvy enough to use your analytics infrastructure that you've designed on Power BI. So now I'm gonna kick things off to Daniel to talk about what are the pros and the cons of Power BI. And I guess you're probably gonna talk about Tableau because that's the two different tools that you and I are using. Sure, yes, and uh, you know, Tableau is, is Power BI's biggest competitor, vice versa. So, so I'll definitely do just a compare and contrast um, on each of these five um, processes here. So when it comes to preparing the data, uh, Power BI has the Power Query editor actually built into the Power BI program. And I think that's a, a key benefit that it has over Tableau's offering because if you want to do any major transformations to the data, you have to install Tableau Prep Builder. And this is a big challenge if you do not have the money to buy Tableau Desktop because you could um, instead just use Tableau Public for free. Okay, so what that means, you'll have to do a lot of the data transformation outside, perhaps in Excel, um, who, that also has the Power um, Query Editor, but you know, there's all those challenges you must go through. Uh, one advantage I really like about the Power BI uh, Power Query Editor is that you can do a lot of the features that you would do when you're transforming data in Excel without having to alter the, say, the Excel spreadsheet you're connecting to. Uh, you can't actually edit the cell directly, but you can remove rows, which is kind of nice, and that's kind of hard to do even in Tableau Prep. Um, both of them do leave a nice trail of breadcrumbs, though, in the data preparation process, which is key uh, when you're uh, used to working in a low-code or no-code environment, and you just want to go through that way. Awesome, and there was one specific use case. We actually talked about this yesterday mm -hmm. uh, while I was on campus at HPU. Um, what was the, the use case you were talking about? You, were, you had a stacked bar chart and you were having a hard time sorting how those were stacked within Power BI? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that is in the visualizing data stage there. Mm -hmm. So in that process, I would say that it's more intuitive uh, for most people to do Tableau desktop when it comes to data visualization. It's very, the drag and drop features I think are a little bit easier to use. There's less on the screen, so it's a little less intimidating, uh, but I am biased. I, I got good at Tableau first, and then I got better Excel, and then I reapproached Power BI. So it's a different path that I'm mm -hmm. going on. So if you're really good at Excel, then perhaps Power BI is not that big of a learning curve for you, especially if you work with pivot tables a lot. But when it comes to the, uh, the visualization, uh, it was, it's kind of weird that like some common features like that Tableau has like sorting stacked bars is not exactly easy to do in Power BI. And you actually have to, depending on the type of visualization you do, you might actually have to build a custom sort into your model Right. and then sort so that you have, way. you have to break it to be able to, it's you know, like you're hacking. The you do have to hack it sometimes right. to do things that you would think would be easy to do. Um, and that would be kind of one of the, the first interesting disadvantages I saw with the Power BI as opposed to the right. Tableau desktop. But 
because I actually get asked about this all the time. I was in a client call yesterday mm-hmm. with the CFO where he was, we've been working on Tableau for about a year and a half now, and they are moving their, I think it's their ERP system to something hosted by Microsoft. Mm-hmm. And I think they either have a discount or Power BI is like baked into that infrastructure. And he was asking me, well, what are the pros and cons of Tableau versus Power BI? And I've almost kind of got like my, my sentiment locked and loaded on this. So what I almost always say is that Tableau is a data visualization software with data modeling tacked on top. And Power BI, Power BI is the opposite, where it's a data modeling software with some data visualization tacked on top. So that kind of, I think, illustrates the strengths and the weaknesses of these two specific tools. Mm. So if you are you know, wanting to get into deep into visualization, I would go with Power BI or Tableau. But if you have a bunch of different data sources you're working with and you need to transform them and clean up the data, Power BI is probably your best bet. Mm. That being said, I have heard of quite a few organizations who use both. Mm -hmm. They use Power BI for the simple reporting, and then if they want to do a deep dive analysis, they bring in Tableau. Yeah, so it's kind of one of those situations where Ford needed Chevrolet and Chevrolet needed Ford. (laughs) I think they're both products are getting better because of the competition. And I'd say that the the relative advantages and disadvantages, those are kind of melding away as the products improve. Like, so Tableau Desktop just pulled out a new data model. Mm. And what's really cool about theirs is they've got these things, they call them relationships, but the the vernacular term is is, um, noodles. Oh, wow. Okay, so because there's these little noodles that connect tables Mm. to another, and it automatically kind of guesses the common field that you should join on. And then when you're doing visualizations, it'll actually detect the type of join that is most appropriate for that. And so for someone who doesn't really understand data modeling, you can get busy connecting lots of different sources very easily in Tableau Desktop. That's awesome. But from a more traditional data modeling standpoint, you know, Power BI's data model looks a lot more like an entity relationship diagram that you would see for a database. And so you can actually see the tables connecting. You can see if it's a one to many or a many to many connection. And then you can see like the actual fields in all the tables. Um, so there's lots of cool um, Sweet. advantages and disadvantages. Depends on what you're into, really. Yeah. Well, I think we've given the audience here quite a bit to talk about because this may be a, something that comes up in your interview. You know, what tools do you use? What are the strengths and the weaknesses? How do you use them from a tactical standpoint? So, uh, you know, maybe go back and listen to this episode again and really kind of um, digest all that we've thrown at you. Make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell for notifications, and we'll see you guys in the upcoming video.